A very warm welcome to each and everyone in line, wherever you listen to us in the world, and welcome to our um, series of web webinars uh, with seminars which take place due to the fact that the Interpac this year does not take place. But we have ESF thought, okay, it's a good idea to show you some of our products and great topics also in a virtual setup. So before we go into the content, I would like to introduce to you the topic you are um, you are seeing today and you will get some more information about. So we are going to talk about the new ultra grades for thermoforming and injection molding applications with tailor-made property profiles. And we have three amazing experts in line who will share this content with you. And so you can see them here on our screen and also some of them, yes, cameras are turning on. So you can see them already in the camera. So we start with Tatiana, Tatiana Ulanov. She's with BSF um, since 14 years now, and she's looking at the ultra dual packaging topic with a marketing experts view. Then we have Maximilian Lehenmeyer in, the, in this uh, call. He's our expert in the area um, of product development for UltraDuo and he has more than 10 years of experience with BASF and he will talk about the UltraDuo product for thermoforming. And last but not least, we have Christian Schweiger with us, who is our expert in the area, area of technical and application development. And he will give you an insight about the UltraDuo packaging focused in injection molding. And two additional names I would like to mention, so you also can see Albert Kamp um, in the screen smiling already. And Albert is our Q&A responsible for today. So if you have any questions, please direct them to Albert, so the host of the webinar, and then he will um, in the end cluster them and also read them out to our experts and they will answer. And my name is Nina Osten. I'm in the communications department in BSF in the monomers division, responsible for the communications of the polyamides business. And I'm your technical host for today. So if you have any issues, any technical setup that does not work, please come to me, give me a chat heads up, and I will try to help you. So before we go into the details of our topic today, just some WebEx housekeeping rules. So please, when you dial in, provide your full name. Do not appear as a dial-in user. And we have set you all per default on mute. Um, you can ask questions for sure. You can use the Q&A functionality or the chat functionality here in WebEx on the right-hand side of the, of the tool. Or you can raise your hand virtually and we can unmute you and you can address your question directly to our experts. We will answer all the questions at the end of the session. And we would like to ask you, please turn off your video. Our speakers will have their video turned on that you can see them during their presentation. But for the rest of us, please turn it off due to bandwidth issues. Um, we recommend you to use the voice over IP audio connections or the call using computer function. And also please note that we are recording the session today for those participants who were not able to join this morning or who are not able to join today in the evening. So we will publish that recording um, by the end of this week on our website, on the website for um, the Interpac registration. So for the web, uh, web seminars. And so you get that information then also if you wanna have a look at it again. Um, and uh, just for your information as well, don't worry, you can only see yourself as a participant in this line. Additionally, to our, um, to our um, panelists, um, that's due to the reason that we want to protect your data, but we have in general about 25 colleagues here in line, so you are not alone, um, but you can only see yourself as mentioned. And with that, I will hand over the ball to Tatiana and we start with our content. Thank you very much, Nina, for the introduction. Let me share my screen as soon as I have a ball. <laughs> mm -hmm. So let me try again. Didn't work, but now. Okay, I hope you can see it and you can hear me. Um, 
Welcome to our session Ultra Draw for packaging. I am really excited to have all of you here today and we will be talking about new Ultra Draw grades for thermoforming and injection molding application. I would like to start with key packaging trends, which are mainly driven first of all by regulation. New regulations are becoming stricter and stricter and require new solutions to adopt all these regulatory requirements, particularly requirements on packaging recycling. Public awareness is definitely one of the most important driver. People tend to be more and more interested in packaging composition, how it was manufactured and how protective is this food packaging. And last but not least, what happens with this packaging after end of life? I would like to introduce to you today our material of choice for food packaging application. Our new ultra drawer for barrier packaging. The excellent barrier properties of uh, ultra draw are allowed to significantly extend the product shelf life and therefore reduce food waste, reduce transport costs, and extend and export destinations. Ultra draw is well known for his very good mechanical properties, which allow to realize very thin wall of this packaging without losing on performance and therefore again to save material and costs. The packaging can be used as well at minus temperatures as also at high temperatures. And one of the key advantages of our ultra door packaging that all this can be realized with one material. One material packaging is definitely preferred design for mechanical recycling simplify quality control and allows easy recycling of production waste. All this make this packaging a good alternative to multi-layer and aluminium packaging. BASF is a leading global provider of engineering plastics as TPU, Celasto, Polyamide 6 or 66 and the number one provider of PPT compounds. BASF has worldwide production sites as well for compounds as also for base polymer. UltraDraw is a BASF brand name for semicrystalline thermoplastic polyester, polybutylene terephthalate PBT. And the key advantages of this polymer are high melting point, fast crystallization, low water uptake, and therefore good dimension stability and excellent barrier properties. And the range of applications which benefit from these properties of this polymer is fast from high quality technical components for fiber optical cable or automotive industry to high demanding food packaging applications as well for injection molding as also for thermoforming packaging. And now I would like to hand it over to Christian Schweiger, who will give you a bit more details on injection molding. Yeah, thank you, Tatiana. Um, yeah, what makes uh, UltraDur such interesting for rigid thin wall packaging, especially if um, aroma barrier is of need? Uh, let us take a look on the uh, classical barrier packaging and on the single layer barrier packaging. The classical barrier packaging system uh, consists from polypropylene as a main component, which provides the water vapor barrier and um, additional layer of EVOH, which provides the oxygen barrier and a further polyolefin as a functional layer, which protects the EVOH. So this system consists from um, several materials and the advantage of this system is um, it's less expensive because the main component is uh, polypropylene. And the uh, further um, advantage is uh, the, it has a very good moisture, moisture barrier. The single layer barrier packaging consists from one material, the PVT or the Ultra Dur, uh, which provides both the water vapor barrier and the oxygen barrier. The advantage is uh, it's the system consists from one material and uh, 
Furthermore, its uh, short cycle times are feasible because the fast crystallinization of uh, PBT. Uh, because of the high E modulus, thin walled uh, packaging items uh, have a very high top load. And uh, due to the high heat distortion temperature, hot filling is possible. Uh, furthermore, um, it has a high dimensional uh, quality. Let us take a look on the main um, physical properties. So we offer two injection molding grades, um, the Ultra Dua B1520 FC R01 and the more flexible grade Ultra Dua B1523 FC R01. The MVR is 110 and 79. So this means uh, very good flowability of these grades and the good processing and easy processing. Um, tensile modulus is about 2400 megapascal and for the flexible one, 1600 megapascal. Um, and this is uh, far beyond uh, polypropylene, uh, which has about um, 1000 megapascal or higher stiffness. Um, the Charpy Anotched uh, is 122 and 225 kilojoule per meter square. So these are good values. And if you squeeze a coffee capsule in your hand, uh, the capsule will not break, uh, though the material is not brittle as such. The heat deflection temperature is 145 degrees for both grades. And um, this allows to consider uh, hot filling uh, for both grades. So we provide food contact certificates um, for both materials for the European Union. Migration values have been determined on brewed coffee. So the coffee was brewed with coffee capsules made from Ultra Dua B1520 FC R01. And the filled, filled coffee capsule were stored under elevated temperature at 40 degree and as well under room temperature. And uh, on the diagram here below, you see on the ordinate the THF um, in brewed coffee in parts per million. And on the abscess, the uh, storage time in days and as you see can see um, um, the data in uh, thf in brute coffee is um, much below the uh, specific migration limit of 0.6 parts per million so the new ultra dual grades the r01 grades uh, pass the specific migration limit in brute coffee um, according to the EU standard 10 2011. So the testing has been conducted at the Independent Testing Institute in Munich. This diagram shows the oxygen concentration inside a, a capsule or a cap over the time. So we made in the um, capsules from pure polypropylene and as well from uh, Ultra Dua. And these caps uh, has a, have a wall thickness of 0.7 millimeters. And as you can see in the diagram, the ordinate shows the oxygen content inside the capsule in percent, so in, inside the capsule in the headspace. And on the abscess, we see um, the time of exposure in days to standard climate. And we see that um, um, after 370 days, the um, oxygen content inside the Ultra Dua cap uh, has less than 3%. So the permeation of oxygen through the Ultra Dua is very, very slow. Um, so for this region, uh, this is underlines a very good aroma barrier properties of Ultra Dua and the secondary packaging with aluminum foil is normally not needed for this kind of packaging items. 
We considered as well uh, material savings. Um, so a standard capsule for Nespresso systems, uh, which is made from pol uh, buta, uh, polybutadiene, uh, polybutadiene of the lard from PBT, um, has a weight of 2.3 to 2.7 grams. And we used the BSF know-how and the ultrasim workflow to reduce the weight for such a capsule. So what we did is we made a topology optimization. Next slide, please. And um, this is a mathematical approach that optimizes the material layout within a given design space. So we defined border conditions and the program calculated the wall thickness distribution. And by this, we reached a 50% uh, mass reduction of the capsule. And the capsule weight um, has is 1.3 grams, what is what was calculated. So this um, uh, reduces um, so we reduce the weight of the coffee capsules without losing um, the functionality. So we checked the functionality because we um, produced an um, injection molding tool where we implemented this design and we produced in our technical lab coffee capsule from UltraDur, uh, which has this weight of 1.5 gram and we made uh, brewing operations with that capsule and the growing operations uh, went uh, without any problems with the Ultra Dual B1520 FC R01. So this is a nice example how to reduce weight without losing um, um, uh, significant uh, the, the main properties or functionality. How about injection molding? We can not only produce uh, small coffee capsules from this material, but as well bigger um, um, packaging items like containers or trays. Here we have an example. Uh, this is a container which was injection molded by UltraDur B1520 FC R01. This has a wall thickness of 0.5 millimeter and a flow length of 140 millimeters. And this part is gated in the center. So this is possible to injection mold because of the very good flowability and UltraDur is really easy, easy to process. Now I would like to hand over to Max uh, for the extrusion. Thank you, Christian. Yes, I would go on with the extrusion. As you heard, PBT is mainly used in injection molding application. And of course, we want to make sure that it's also processable by extrusion. Um, how we have done this, of course, at the beginning, we significantly increased the melt strength by clicking together polymer change and introducing branches to the material, which results in the first extrudable PBT. And you can extrude this, for example, on standard film extrusion lines. The effect we will see on the next slide in the video. On the left hand side, you see a, a high molecular weight standard PBT. And on the right hand side, our new ultra for extrusion, when you can directly see the difference in melt strength as well as in processability. So on the left, in the, on the photo, you see with the high melt strength, it's really extrudable and you can make nice profiles out of that. Of course, not only profiles, pipes would be feasible as well as films. And these films you could use for thermoforming. However, if you use a standard PBT for thermoforming, uh, you see on the left hand side, in these trays, these dark areas, which are actually very thin sections. And you cannot overcome this by um, adjusting your process as PBT is not homogeneously stretchable. And on the right hand side, you see 
the new ultra dual for thermoforming. Here you see that it is homogeneously stretched as these black areas do not appear. So with that, we have developed this new ultra dual for thermoforming combined with the high melt strength. So you can easily extrude films and then with the homogeneous stretching do the thermoforming. As well as this grade is easy to color and also forming is possible to even reduce the density of your part. Of course, in thermoforming, uh, you have to deal with regrind. So we have done internally uh, some tries of regrinding these ultra dual grades um, with a high percentage of regrind up to three times. And as you can see on the right hand side, of course, the material suffers as uh, every plastic. Um, however, as we see from the mechanical values, 50% of regrind is feasible for us. Of course, we would review this in a case by case study um, with your processing conditions. And to see that it's really thermoformable, um, we have done a video together with the company Illig, which is a very big machine producer for thermoforming lines. And in a great cooperation, we did this kind of video and try. Here you see briefly the nice line by the company Illig. And uh, we haven't changed uh, any setup. This is a standard line for polypropylene thermoforming. And uh, we will go through these stages bit by bit. You see here the heated film entering the mold. Um, the heating is done by standard heating devices and also the mold was not adjusted. Um, we can make a lot of these trays in a very short time. Um, I will comment on cycle times in a bit. Um, just to give you a glance, um, we are more comparable in regards to processing to polypropylene as PBT is also a semi-crystalline material and we do not achieve this high um, number of cycles as it's normally used for PET. Nevertheless, on this line with this tray, we even could surpass the number of cycles per minute, which is normally done for polypropylene. And you here you see the final stacking and then the transport of the parts. And in the final bit of the video, you will see the number of cycles per minute. So actually this was really a good collaboration. Uh, of course, also for us a huge step in the direction of extrusion and thermoforming for ultra dual, as this was uh, not done before. And of course, we won't stop here. We want to bring further advantages to our product um, for both processing technologies, injection molding, as well as thermoforming and extrusion. And uh, as Christian mentioned, we have already some quite nice barrier properties, especially against oxygen. However, we want to get even better with this. And you see on the right hand side, the oxygen passing through a cup and the orange and red graphs are cups made of multi-layer structures, which you all know, PP or HPP. And uh, the target, what we have, you see in the blue dots and the blue line. So we want to reduce the oxygen transmission of the ultra tour close to zero. And with that, of course, bring even better properties to the market. 
And another topic we are working on is uh, the THF emissions. THF is a side product in a PBT production. And on the right hand side, you see the THF emissions measured by VDA 277. And a standard PBT normally emits in this kind of measurements 100 ppm of THF. And uh, you see one to the right, the product which was presented by Christian, the Ultra Dual B1520 FC R01, which already has a 10 fold decrease in THF emissions. And we want to bring forward an even lower THF emission, another 10 fold decrease, um, of course, to be on the safe side and also for our customers for more convenience that not so many measurements have to take place on their side. And uh, with that, I hand back to Tatiana to close the loop. Thank you very much, Max. Um, as you might remember, we started our presentation with key trends and drivers. And one of the main drivers for new packaging is definitely sustainability. I would like to show you which sustainable solution can we offer for our new ultra door packaging. Let me start with very simple illustration of plastic production. Usually fossil raw materials such as NAFTA are fed uh, um, into a steam cracker, which produces basic chemicals. These chemicals are further proceed into polymers and these polymers are then used to produce all kinds of plastics from plastic for packaging up to engineering plastics for, for example, cars. Once the use phase of the plastics is over, there are different options what happens with this plastic waste. Today, unfortunately, it's mainly disposed of in landfills or incineration. But there are some other options, some alternatives. The shortest way is well-known mechanical recycling from polymer to polymer process. Today, plastic materials are already partly recycled mechanically. But there are some significant limitations. It is only for selected applications. For mechanical recycling, clean single stream waste is required. And the recycled material generally do not achieve the same level of quality and purity and cannot be used for food contact applications. The next option is complementary to mechanical recycling is chemical recycling. In chemical recycling, the polymer chains of the plastics are chemically broken down into small molecules. This process is called pyrolysis and is used to transform plastic waste into pyrolysis oil. No single stream here is needed. Pyrolysis can also handle low quality mixed plastic waste that would be probably otherwise most probably just incinerated. And we can fit this oil, pyrolysis oil, into our biosafe production network right at the beginning of a value chain and thereby saving fossil resources. We just replace with our fossil resources by recycled pyrolysis oil. The share of recycled material can be allocated to products, to all products manufactured in BiSAF network by using a mass balance approach. As a result, you get the certified products, which are identical to products manufactured from fossil feedstock and which can be used also um, for high demanding applications, such for example, food packaging. The third option to replace fossil raw materials is renewables. Here, there are two options. The first one is very similar from approach to chemical recycling. We replace the fossil raw materials by biogas and uh, feed it right at the beginning and allocate it via mass balance approach to our products manufactured in our network. The another option, we replace one of the key raw materials for ultra-door, BDO, butandiol, by 
by a video. The, all these three options help to save fossil raw materials and last but not least, also to reduce carbon footprint of our products. Thank you very much for your attention. We will be happy to answer your questions and now I would like to hand over to Albert.